Hello, and welcome to this guide to 500% Enraged Zamorak with Necromancy. A quick disclaimer before we begin, this is a more advanced guide than most of the videos on this channel. But for the relative difficulty level, this is the easiest moneymaker in the game that is going to get you over 100 million coins per hour. Expect that it could take a little bit of time to learn, and there are some more advanced PVM techniques used in this method, but once you've learned it, you've got the golden ticket. The kills are extremely safe, to the point that I've been doing this method for the last month on my hard cry Iron Man, and I've not had a single death or ring of death activation in that entire span. And much more importantly, over that month, I've made over 8 billion coins. So with that said, let's get right into this method. One other note, if this method is too difficult for you or has too high requirements, I have a completely different Zamorak guide for 100% Enrage that is a lot more revolution friendly and requires a lot less gear and fewer inputs. If you don't have the gear for this method, doing that method until you can afford this setup is a really good idea. As for the gear, I'm wearing a full five-piece set of the First Necromancer's gear. If you're wondering why we're using First Necromancer gear instead of the regular tier 90 power or tank gear, the tank gear just doesn't offer the amount of damage output that we're gonna need. The tier 90 power gear would be a great option, but unfortunately, the passive on it, which has a chance to randomly death mark and then instantly kill your targets, can go off at a bad time on the 7th phase and instantly kill you. Because of that, it's not really an option, so we're going to be using the tier 95. As for perks, I've got it augmented up with Biting 4 Demon Slayer, Invigorating 4 Mobile, Relentless 5 Crackling 4, and Impatient 4 Undead Slayer. The Undead Slayer perk doesn't do anything here, but the Demon Slayer perk actually does, and it's extremely helpful on the final phase. Because of this, it's absolutely worth comboing on either your Biting, your Invigorating, or your Impatient. If you want more information on how to get these perks, I've linked it all in the description down below. In our pocket slot, we've got Aerithor's Grimoire. This or the full book are your two best options for this boss fight, and either one works. For our weapons, we're going to be using an augmented Tier 95 Omniguard, as well as the Soulbound Lantern. If you don't have the Omniguard, you can get by without it, but the Soulbound Lantern is extremely important, as it allows you to carry two additional souls. These extra soul stacks are used to get through DPS checks, and it's going to make the fight a lot easier to have this. As for augments, I've got Aftershock 4 Eruptive 2, and then I've got Precise 6 Ruthless 1. In my quiver slot, I've got Zemregal's Nexus, which is a necromancy rune pouch. It's going to hold all of my runes. If you don't have Zemregal's Nexus, you can instead bring the standard one and it won't make a big difference. In my cape slot, I've got a Zuck cape, and then for my amulet, I have an Essence of Finality with a Death Guard inside of it. And last but not least, for my ring slot, we're going to be using a Reaver ring in this video. But if you wanted to use an Occultist ring, that would also work. And if you're first learning, the Ring of Death is also an extremely good option, as it'll give you an opportunity to teleport out and should decrease your chance of dying. Now let's get into the invent. In your first slot, you're going to want some kind of Elder Overload. And then next to that, some kind of adrenaline renewing potion. After that, we've got a couple prayer restoring potions, and then we've got a power burst of vitality that we're going to use at one specific point in the boss fight to make one of the mechanics a whole lot easier. After that, I've got 11 blue blubber jellyfish. These are awesome because you can eat them in three separate bites and they will not cost you any adrenaline. To go with these blue blubber jellyfish, I've also got the expensive spices necklace from the Let Them Eat Pie quest. Every bite of blue blubber jellyfish I take is going to heal an additional 50 life points because I've got this amulet in my invent. After that, I've got six Sardomen brew flasks, and then we've got five additional items. The first thing I have is a rune pouch that has runes for disruption shield. We're going to be camping the lunar spellbook here so that we don't need to mess around with spellbook swap, but disruption shield is extremely helpful. After that, I've got Zamorakian Undercity Lucky Charms. And although these aren't needed for the boss fight itself, to start the boss fight, you have to kill six Chaos Witches. And these Chaos Witches, especially with the Lucky Charms, have a ton of good loot. So it's a good idea to bring these in your invent, and you'll make some money passively on the side. After that, I've got my Enhanced Excalibur, which offers a nice heal. A Spirit Shield will make you take 30% reduced damage when you have it equipped. And because of this, it's a really good panic button. For if you mess up or you've got a mechanic to deal with, you'll throw on the Spirit Shield and it'll greatly increase your chance of survival. The final item in my event is a set of vulnerability bombs. These can be thrown on your target and will give you a 10% damage bonus for the next one minute. So these are extremely good to have at any boss fight where your damage output matters. And this is definitely one of those boss fights where you're going to want to be using vulnerability bombs. Now let's take a look at the action bar. If you want to use revolution to upkeep your stacks, you're more than welcome to do that. And if you were to do that, your first five slots would be Conjure Undead Army, Conjure Vengeful Ghost, Touch of Death, Soul Sap, and then Conjure Skeleton Warrior. Anything else you put on your bar after that point is completely up to you. But my preference for building stacks is to use full manual, so my bar is going to look something like this. Now I'm going to mention the specific abilities that you want to make sure that you have on some kind of action bar for use during the fight. You don't need to put them in the same spots that mine are, as we will be firing them off manually, but just put them in a spot that makes sense to you. First thing we're going to highlight is Storm Shards, as well as the Shatter ability. 
Throughout the first six phases of the fight, we're going to be stacking Storm Shards so that we can shatter them on the seventh phase for an extra 30,000 damage. Next to Shatter, I've also got a Power Burst of Vitality and it is conveniently placed right next to Disruption Shield. We're going to be using Disruption Shield periodically throughout the fight, but on phase seven for one specific mechanic, we're going to want to combo the Power Burst of Vitality as well as Disruption Shield back to back, so putting them next to each other just makes sense. Outside of that, I've also got the Invoke Death Incantation as well as the Split Soul Incantations respectively. Both of these are extremely good and it is worth using them throughout the fight. Then we've got the Darkness Incantation that we're going to be running for the entire kill, as well as Life Transfer, which we're going to be using at a specific point in the fight to extend our Conjures. I've got my Mobility Abilities at the bottom of my Action Bar, and I've also got Vulnerability Bomb, because we are going to be using Vuln Bombs throughout the fight. The one other interesting thing that I do have on my bar is the Demon Slayer ability. If you can get your hands on this, it is quite nice for the start of Phase 7, as you are going to be fighting a Demon and there is a bit of a time crunch. When looking at my row of defensive abilities, the ones that we're going to be using in this fight are Freedom, Anticipate, Devotion, and Resonance. So make sure that those four abilities, at very least, are on your bar somewhere. As for familiars, my recommendations would either be to take a Ripper Demon or a Calgarian Demon, but my preference is the Calgarian Demon because it's a little bit cheaper to use per hour and it makes the kills very consistent. As a note, you can set the auto fire rate on the Calgarian Demon to 1, and then every 60 seconds, whenever the critical strike buff wears off, it will automatically renew it. So it's a very laid back familiar to use that doesn't require a lot of upkeep. As for auras, unlike in past methods where there are lots of different options, Majorat is far and away the best option to use at this boss fight. You're going to gain 5% additional damage, which is better than any other aura for necromancy. The Zamorak Arena consists of six pads, which can be charged in any order to progress the fight. Once a pad is charged, its effect will be present for the remainder of the boss fight. These effects can impact your adrenaline gain, your damage dealt, your damage taken, and the effectiveness of your defensive abilities, just to name a few. But for today, all you need to know is the pad order that we'll be doing is 2, 4, 6, 1, 5, 3. This order offers the perfect blend of low damage taken on the first six phases and just enough damage to consistently get through phase seven in a single cycle. Fortunately, even though the pads affect the fight itself, the abilities we're going to use on each pad do not change at all at any point. And what that means is if you can do this simple rotation on one singular pad, you can do all of them. So why don't we start there at the beginning of the Zamorak fight. The Zamorak fight will begin as soon as you've killed all six witches with one standing in front of each pad. And we're gonna be starting the boss fight at pad two as we discussed prior, so I like to start around pad six and then work my way counterclockwise towards the second pad. You can use these witches to give yourself some preliminary stacks, which is generally the idea. And then once I've got one witch left, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Conjure Undead Army, I'm going to use life transfer, and then I'm also going to command the ghost. And that sort of signifies that it's time to start the fight. At this point, you want to make sure that your pocket slot is active. In this case, I've got a grimoire. Make sure your aura is on. Make sure you're overloaded, and also make sure that you've activated the darkness incantation. And then from that point, let's get right into it. As soon as you kill that last witch, Zamorak is going to become attackable and start moving towards you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get in front of the second pad, which is the pad that we want to charge up first. I'm going to activate Death Mark just so that we've got that applied on the boss nice and early. And then we're going to start by attacking the boss. Our primary objective here while attacking the boss is to get that gray HP, which is currently around 70,000, about close to zero. This is because this gray HP turns into red HP as soon as we charge a pad, and we don't really want to deal with red HP. It's an additional period of time where Zamorak can use special attacks, and it can be very punishing because Zamorak also will attack faster during that period. So instead, what we're going to be doing is always getting rid of the gray HP before we step on a pad. One of the ways that we're going to do this is I'm also going to use my Omni Guard special pretty early here. The Omni Guard special attack isn't really used for our skip rotation, so it's not something that we need to save and use for once the pad is charged up. Instead, we're going to use this pretty much at will whenever you want to in order to give yourself a head start with the Grey HP. You're also going to notice that at the very beginning, I threw a Storm Shard on Zamorak, and throughout the fight, you're going to see me doing that specifically during the Grey HP parts where Zami can't spec. Because Zamorak can't spec during these points, you can kind of take your time and use whatever abilities you would like. Now that Zamorak is under 60,000 life points, I'm going to activate the Split Soul Incantation, and I'm going to start standing on the pad to charge it up. And I'm also going to use Death Skulls. The one other thing I like to do when I step on the pad is I like to reapply bloat. Not only is it going to help me get the gray HP all the way to zero, but it will also help me phase the boss as well because it hits so many times and for so long. Something I'm going to notice here that I do is I use Disruption Shield at this point. This is because when you've got Split Soul active, you need to basically Soul Split Flick in order to benefit from the damage. You don't want to be just tanking Zamorak's auto attacks without prayer, but you also want Soul Split on. 
but Disruption Shield is a really good hack for that, especially if your soul split flicking isn't the best. Disruption Shield is basically just going to let you tank one of those auto attacks without having to take off your soul split. Now that we see the pad charging, all I'm going to be focused on doing here is making sure that I've got all of my stacks. I want to make sure that I've got all five of my souls, and I also want to make sure that I have all 12 Necrosis stacks. So I notice here that I'm not full on Necrosis stacks, so why don't we use Touch of Death to remedy that? As soon as the pad is about to be charged, you want to do this exact rotation. This is the rotation that you're going to use at every pad, so even though it's a few abilities in a pretty specific order, you only have to learn it once. Once the pad's about to be charged, I'm going to activate Soul Split, and then it is as simple as using Volley of Souls, using Finger of Death, using Finger of Death a second time, and then using my Death Guard Special Attack, which is inside my Essence of Finality. And just like that, we have actually completely phased the boss without having to deal with any special attacks or any mechanics. Zamorak is going to say heed my call, and just like that, we've completed the first pad. So once again, watching it back, the rotation is Volley of Souls, Finger of Death, Finger of Death, and then your Death Guard Special Attack. And that is all you need to phase the boss. Now that we've finished the first phase, I'm going to start working my way towards the next pad that we're going to be doing, which is pad 4. And once we're there, I'm just going to whittle away at that grey HP a little bit. In addition to that, I'm also going to throw another Storm Shard, so at this point, I now have two. Once we're securely on the pad, I'm going to click my special action button, which I've marked on screen, and that is going to send me into Infernus, where we're going to have a Chaos Witch to deal with. You have to kill a Chaos Witch between every single pad, as that will allow you to charge up the next pad and progress through the boss fight. If you don't kill the Witch, you can't charge up the next pad. You'll stand on it, and nothing will happen. As soon as I enter Infernus, I'm going to use the Anticipate ability, because the Witch's first attack is a stun. And then all I'm really doing at the Witch is whittling away at her HP. You can also put on Soul Split for this part, and she doesn't do a ton of damage. My main focus is going to be rebuilding up all of my stacks so that once we get to the next pad, I'll have all my stacks ready and we're going to spend them in the exact same way as we did before. The one other thing I really like to do while I'm in Infernus is I like to eat up and then use the life transfer incantation. This is because when I'm actually fighting Zamrock, Zami does a good chunk of damage and I don't feel totally comfortable using life transfer while the boss is attacking me at the same time. But once you're at Infernus, you can pretty well chill. Take your time, eat up some food, and make sure that your conjures are healthy and alive. So you're going to see right here, I'm going to eat some food, I'm going to use life transfer, I'm going to continue eating some food, and then as soon as the witch is dead, all we're going to do is we're going to hit that special action button again, and then we are back outside and ready to continue attacking Zamorak. The one other thing I'm going to mention about the witch is if you take too long to kill the witch, you're going to be hit with a 6 second stun. So if the witch does end up stunning you in place, all you need to do is use the freedom ability. It's not needed for anything else. Every time I use my special action button to leave Infernus, as soon as I retarget Zamorak, I throw another vulnerability bomb. These pads take just about a minute, so it's a really good way to make sure that my vulnerability is always on for the point that I need it. And now that we're out of Infernus, we've already pre-positioned ourselves on the pad, we've got all of our stacks in place, so now all I'm going to do for the second pad is I'm going to look at my cooldowns, I'm going to make sure that both Split Soul and Death Skulls are about to come off, and then at that point, as soon as they're available, I'm going to step on the pad, I'm going to Split Soul, I'm going to Death Skulls, and then I'm going to do the exact same rotation as before. When the pad is about to be charged, I'm going to use Volley of Souls, I'm going to use Finger of Death, I'm going to Finger of Death a second time, then I'm going to Death Guard Special. And just like the first phase, that is all you need to do to get it phased nice and easy. And then it's a complete repeat of everything that we did before. I'm going to then bring the boss towards the sixth pad. I'm going to deal a little bit of damage. I'm going to start building up some stacks. And the one other thing that I did here is because there was a lot of great HP, I decided to use my OmniGuard special attack because we don't need it for a skip rotation. It's another good point to use it. And then as soon as the boss is nice and low, we're going to go back in and go back to killing the witch. Usually on the witch before pad six, my conjures are going to die. So what I'm going to do is I'll reconjure them. I'll re-life transfer. We're going to continue to kill the witch, and then as soon as the witch is dead, it's the exact same thing as before. We're going to hit that special action button, and then we're going to resume attacking Zamorak. You're going to notice here that I'm missing a couple soul stacks, so I'm going to prioritize getting those stacks back up, and it's the exact same thing, where right as my split soul and my death skulls are about to come off cooldown, that's when I'm ready to step on the pad. The gray HP is nice and low, so let's step on the pad, let's activate split soul, let's cast our death skulls, and then right as the pad is about to be charged up, I'm going to use Disruption Shield so that I can safely put on Soul Split. And then it's the exact same rotation as before. Volley of Souls, Finger of Death, Finger of Death, Death Grasp. Just like that, it is phased every single time. After pad 6, we've got a bit of a run to do because we're going all the way from pad 6 to pad 1. Pad 1 is the pad where Zamorak gains Twin Shot, which means every single attack gets echoed and then will also hit you a second time immediately after the first hit. I've used my OmniGuard special again just to get through that gray HP a little bit faster, and then it's exactly the same as before. We're getting into the Chaos Witch, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to extend my conjures, 
Soon as the witch dies, we're gonna head back on out, and then guess what? We're gonna do the exact same rotation we did before. So let's fast forward to that. I've activated Split Soul, I've activated Death Skulls, and then as soon as the pad is about to be charged up, you're gonna notice that Zamorak's HP is nice and low, which is what we're looking for. Then it's gonna be Volley of Souls, it's gonna be Finger of Death, Finger of Death, and then the Death Guard Special Attack. Just like that, it's done once again. As soon as we're out of pad one, you're going to notice the twin shot, which is that after that initial hit of 1000 damage, there's a secondary hit of 375. The secondary hit is going to get larger and larger every pad remaining, but fortunately we've only got a couple pads left, so it's not going to get too bad before the end of the fight. With that said, why don't we leave pad one and get over towards pad five, which is the next pad that we're going to be doing. So we're going to run over to pad five right now. We're going to kill the Chaos Witch, and then we're going to head back outside. And this is where things change ever so slightly because pad five is the chaos trap pad, which means once we charge it, a number of chaos traps are gonna spawn all around the arena. But in addition to spawning all around the arena, a chaos trap is also gonna spawn on top of every pad, including the one that I'm standing on. So this time around, you're gonna notice that we do something a little bit different in order to avoid that. There's my split soul, there's my death skulls, there's my bloat, and this time around, when we use volley of souls here, the one other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna immediately step off the pad. We're doing this so that the Chaos Trap is going to spawn once we've already left. If I were to stay on top of the pad right here, the Chaos Trap would both hit me for 4 to 5,000 magic damage, and it would also stun me in place, which can be a death sentence. If you're not so good with the timing here, you can alternatively also just use Magic Prayer and also use the Anticipate ability so you don't get stunned, but I think it is way easier to just step off the pad when you use Volley of Souls, and you'll see the trap spawn right there, right on top of the pad. So at this point, we've barely used any food, we've done the exact same rotation on every single pad, and we're absolutely cruising with only one pad left to go before phase seven. And of course, like anything, it's gonna take some practice to get the hang of it, but once you've got it, it's so consistent and it works every single time. You're gonna notice that because we've charged up pad five, there's now gonna be a chaos trap sitting on top of the final edict we're going to, which is gonna be pad three. By far the easiest way of dealing with this Chaos Trap is simply to continue attacking Zamorak and whittling away at the Grey HP whenever Zamorak is using ranged attacks. And then whenever Zamorak naturally switches to magic attacks, at that point and that point only, am I gonna pray magic? And then at this point, I'm also gonna use the Devotion ability, I'm gonna use Anticipate or Freedom, and I'm gonna jump on the pad. That's a really good way to make sure that you're dealing with that Chaos Trap without having to stand on top of it. If you just run out of the trap while praying Deflect Range, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be hit about four or 5,000 damage, and then after you take that hit, you're also gonna be stunned for a little bit too. So you always wanna make sure that you're going onto that pad when Zamorak is already attacking with magic. It makes it a lot easier. With that said, once the Chaos Trap is dealt with, we're gonna go and take care of the Witch, just like we always would. But heading out from this Witch, dealing with this very last pad is gonna be a little bit different than the previous one. The one big change we're going to be making here is instead of doing the exact same rotation we've done every other pad, this time around we also don't want to use our Death Guard special attack because we're going to be using it at the very beginning of Phase 7. Because of this, it's really important to make sure that you're getting this Grey HP as low as you possibly can, and you also just want to make sure that you've got a Vulnerability Bomb applied as well so that you're doing as much damage as you can. As soon as you've got the Grey HP completely gone, we're gonna use our Split Soul, we're gonna hop on the pad, we're gonna use our Death Skulls and another Bloat as well, and then it's time to deal damage. I'm doing a Finger of Death twice, I'm volleying my souls, and then after that, we're just trying to deal that last bit of damage before the first special attack. As soon as you charge up pad three, you're gonna be dealing 25% reduced damage because of the Witch that has spawned slightly off screen, but I'll try to mark the area. We're charging this pad last because we don't want to actually have to take the time to kill the witch and then resume attacking Zamrock. so instead we're kind of brute forcing it. But you are going to notice for this section that I'm dealing a little bit less damage than I would otherwise. Because of that, it can be a little bit tougher to get to that phase HP. As soon as Zamrock reaches 30,000 life points, the death mark is going to apply and you're going to get sent into phase 7. So in this instance, I'm completely fine and I've done enough damage. But if you did happen to be short on damage, the first special attack you would receive is a melee slam, where Zamorak is going to say THIS WORLD WILL BURN and then hit you with two melee attacks back to back. The best way to deal with this is to simply put on deflect melee and then also use the devotion ability. So if you do get that special attack and you hear Zamorak say this world will burn, get ready to do that. Phase 7 doesn't start when Phase 7 starts, it actually starts immediately in the cutscene, because there are some actions you can do while you're in the cutscene that are going to get you ready for the phase. The first thing I'm going to do is outside of the prayer book, I'm going to click on Deflect Magic, and that's going to automatically switch my prayer as soon as I'm out of the cutscene. And then after that, you're also going to see my cursor is currently on top of Invoke Death. This is because for whatever reason, you can actually cast the Invoke Death incantation 
from inside the cutscene, which means it's completely lossless to do. What this is going to mean is the second I tag the demon at the start of phase 7, he's already going to be deathmarked. Once your invoke death goes off, you can also click on your Demon Slayer ability codex if you have it from within the cutscene. And just like that, we're on to phase 7. A demon is going to spawn at somewhere in the area of marked on screen, but there is a chance that the demon spawns really far away, and if you were to immediately use target cycle from the location that you drop down on, there's a very slight chance that you'll actually target the harmonica instead, which could be absolutely lethal. So because of this, as soon as I drop down on phase 7, instead of immediately clicking target cycle, I'm actually going to run my character forward first, and then as soon as my character starts to move, I'm then going to use target cycle and my death guard special attack. Target Cycle is going to automatically target me onto the demon because the demon is the closest entity to me. And then the Death Guard special attack is going to do two things. First off, as you can see, it does an absolute ton of damage to the demon, basically getting it to half HP right off rip. But in addition to that, it also will root the demon in place so that you don't need to worry about running around or dealing with the demon's melee attack. Once I've targeted the demon, I'm also going to use a vulnerability bomb, which is very optional. After my Death Guard special attack, I'm going to get my Conjurers up and running because they're going to help me out for the whole rest of the phase. So it's going to be Conjure and Army. And then after that, I'm also going to use Touch of Death as well as Soul Sap as a way to start building up those stacks. That should be enough to completely kill the demon, but if it isn't, you can also begin to run around. This is because the demon and your character move at the exact same pace, so if you want to just run around, the demon won't be able to hit you at all so long as you're moving. That being said, the demon should be pretty much dead by this point, so this is very optional. Once I've used my Touch of Death and my Soul Sap, I'm then going to be commanding my Ghost, as that's going to give me a damage bonus for the remainder of the phase. And then after that, I'm going to click on Invoke Death a second time. This time for Invoke Death, I'm going to be applying a Death Mark to Zamorok. So in order to do that, once I've clicked on Invoke Death, I'm then going to target Zamorok, and I'm going to use an ability on Zami. In this instance, because I have Soul Sap available to me, I'm going to use Soul Sap, because we are going to want as many souls as we possibly can. So, I'm going to tag Zamorok with my Soul Sap, and while I'm there, I'm also going to throw a Vulnerability Bomb on Zamorok. If you want to look at your target specific information window, mine is at the bottom left hand side of my screen, you're going to notice here that Zamrock both has the death mark icon, the vulnerability icon, and it's also a good opportunity to double check and make sure that I've got enough storm shards. I have nine in this case, which is more than enough. So at that point, it's going to be as easy as focusing on targeting the two runes that Zamrock is going to show. It is important to kill these runes quickly, because the HP bar at the top of the screen that I've marked is actually the size of the bomb that you're going to take once you've cleared both of those runes. The lower this is, the easier it's going to be to survive. But fortunately, because the runes don't have that many life points and we are using necromancy, we don't need to worry too too much about wasting too much damage on the runes themselves. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Living Death, which is my necromancy ultimate ability, and then I'm going to completely kill both of these runes with basic abilities only. The only objective here is to make sure that by the time both runes die, I have maximum stacks with both my souls and my necrosis. By the time this final rune dies, you should have 12 necrosis stacks, and you should also have all five souls. And then at that point, let's get in to how we're going to actually deal with Zamorok, both with regard to tanking the bomb, as well as with dealing enough damage to finish the boss in one cycle. If I go back just a second here, you're going to notice that the size of this bomb is on screen right now. The bomb is slowly charging up, and you're going to notice here that it is about 9,300 damage if I get to the last point that I can see the bar. As soon as you kill that final rune, you actually won't be able to see how much damage you're going to be taking for the bomb, because as soon as this rune dies, it's going to be replaced with Zamorok's HP bar. But 9,300 is the amount of damage that bomb is going to hit. It's worth noting that if you take longer to kill the runes, it's very reasonable that this bomb could be between 10 and 12,000 damage. But if it's more than 12,000 damage, although you're not going to die, you are probably doing something wrong, and you might need a little bit more practice with the timing of this phase. That being said, let's get in to what to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to surge towards Zamrock, and then after that, I'm going to use the Devotion ability and pray deflect melee. Devotion is really important here because the first thing that Zamrock is going to do is hit me with a melee slam. After using Devotion, I'm going to click on Zamrock, and then I'm going to do the following very simple rotation. The first ability I'll be using is my OmniGuard special attack. It's going to get me a good little chunk of damage. And then after that, I'm going to be using Finger of Death twice by spending all of my Necrosis stacks. Because I've got 12 Necrosis stacks, both of these Fingers of Death are not going to cost me any Adrenaline, so I'm still going to be above 50% after doing this. So there's my first Finger of Death, and there's my second Finger of Death. After your OmniGuard special and your Two Fingers of Death, you're going to notice that the big bomb is flying towards your character. And at this point, you want to do two things. The first thing you want to do is you want to consume a Power Burst of Vitality, which is going to double your life points. And the second thing you want to do is use the Disruption Shield spell if you have it. 
And just like that, instead of hitting me about 9,300 damage, you're going to see that this bomb is only going to hit me a 6,800 out of a total of 23,200 life points that I have. So really, this bomb is light work. As soon as the big bomb hits us, we're then going to use Volley of Souls, and then it's going to be as simple as using Shatter, and then the Death Guard Special Attack, which is inside my Essence of Finality, to completely finish it off. And just like that, in about 6 minutes, you just made 8 million GP of Alkables. Something else I'm going to mention here is that a 10,000 damage bomb is pretty optimistic. It's about as good as you can get when doing this method, and when you're first learning, it's going to take you longer to kill the runes. That's one of the reasons why we're using a Vitality Power Burst as well as Disruption Shield in order to combat the big bomb. Because of this, even if the bomb was 15,000, 16,000, or even 17,000 damage, it's still going to be very easy for us to tank, and we're going to be able to finish the kill either way. So when you're first learning, expect the big bomb to be a little bit bigger than it was in this clip, but know that it is still completely and utterly tankable, even if it's double the size. The one other thing I wanted to mention for Phase 7 is if you're not able to deal enough damage, Zamorak is going to say heed my call again, hit you with another melee hit, and then there's going to be a second big bomb. Although this shouldn't happen at any point, if you do make mistakes, it is possible that this happens. And if it does, the operation to not die is extremely simple. All you need to do is when you hear Zamorak say heed my call, you're going to use the resonance ability, and that's going to get you up to pretty high life points. And then after that, all you need to do is make sure that you've put on your spirit shield. With your Spirit Shield equipped, provided you have enough prayer points, even if the bomb is 10,000 damage, it's actually not going to kill you. It'll hit you about 7k, and you'll be alive to continue on the fight. So just as I mentioned, that's effectively what your panic button is. And that's it. We've managed to completely one cycle Phase 7 Zamorak at 500% in Rage like it was nothing. And that's the whole method. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. And outside of that, don't forget to subscribe for more.